everyone. It's Wednesday morning, February the 10th, 2021. Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Welcome if you're joining us for the first time and if you're coming back um, and you're part of our assembly, we're going to be starting a new uh, series in Food for Thought starting this morning, running for the next number of weeks, should the Lord will it. Um, we're going to be covering off uh, the parables of Jesus Christ. Now, have you ever thought about why, all the way through the New Testament Gospels, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables? Many of the people didn't really understand what he was saying when he spoke in these parables. As a matter of fact, in the three Gospels, the first three Gospels, there are 24 individual parables that Jesus told. Many of them are repeated in each book. And with all the miracles Jesus was doing, um, there was so much evidence around for believing in Jesus. Yet, the people, they, they still pushed away from him. And, and we see, you know, at the, the trial of Christ, the masses of people that were calling out, crucify him, crucify him, when Jesus had done no wrong. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about human nature and, and why it was that Jesus spoke in parables. Well, we see the Apostle Paul um, talks to us and gives us a bit of a, an insight into, I think, the reasoning why Jesus spoke in parables. And Jesus actually brought it out himself in Mark chapter 4, but um, in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, Paul says something about the human nature of people apart from God. And this is what he says. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all of the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress truth by their wickedness. Since what may, may be made known to them about God is plain, because God has made it plain to them, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are, are without excuse. Well, because of all the godlessness and wickedness of humanity, you know, the, the Apostle Paul continues to talk about the different ways of thinking that go away from God, including thinking on human sexuality, and then he encapsulates the whole mindset of godlessness that's out there in rebellion to him. He, in verse 28, he says this, he says, furthermore, talking about people following their sin natures, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. You see, due to the hardness of people's heart in, this, in their sin nature against the truth, um, the Lord actually gives people over to depravity in their thinking because that's what they ask for and they insist on it. So he gives them over to it. Um, it's because of this fact that Jesus spoke to the masses of people in parables. Jesus made this plain in Mark chapter 4, 10 to 12, right after he told the parable of the sower uh, without explanation. He told it, to crowd the people that were listening to him. And after he told the parable, the, the disciples were wondering what, what he was talking about as well. But Jesus gave explanation to his parable to the twelve and the other disciples. He said this in, in, in verses 10 to 12 of, of Mark 4. When he was done, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Well, when you read this at face value, and when I've read this before, it, it kind of troubles me. Well, why would Jesus want people not to perceive um, and not to turn and, and be forgiven? Well, I think we need to look deeper at this. In verse 12, Jesus Christ is quoting from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, 9, and 10. And if we grasp the meaning of that 
in context with where it was written, I think we'll be able to understand the, the verse in question in, in Mark. Isaiah's own sins had just been cleansed, and immediately he offered himself to the Lord as his messenger. The Lord responded with these words. He said, Go and tell this people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused. Make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. This is interesting. See, Jesus quoted from this passage because there's a similar principle in play. You see, because the Israelites had been refusing repeatedly to, relist, to listen to the truth of God as revealed to them in so many different ways, through the miracles done in the wanderings in the desert, through overcoming the land of, of, the, of the Canaanites, through the miracles, one after the other, all the way through the history, through the words of, of the Lord's prophets, through the teachings of Moses, you know, they, they had opportunity to follow God, but yet they were worshipping idols. Now indeed, you know, in this culture, um, in, in, in Isaiah's time, the same is true in Mark chapter 4, where Jesus is saying the same thing is happening and, and I think today there's the same kind of issues at play as well. Why would the Lord do this? Um, why would he approach things in this manner? Well, it's because he had proclaimed his word to these people in miraculous ways so many times. Time and time again, they had continually hardened their hearts and rejected the truth. They had proved that they did not want the truth. So now, God would give them over to judgment. You see the connection here with the Pauline uh, writings in Romans? Um, so God would give them over to judgment, preaching to them a message that they would not be able to understand. Now when Stephen, the first martyr of the church in Acts, prior to his execution, looked at the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the teachers of the law, and he responded to them in Acts 7, 51-53. He said this to them directly, You stiff-necked people, your hearts and your ears are uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those uh, who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it. So Stephen was stating what the Apostle Paul was saying in his word. Stephen in action and in word here was, was stating what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 1. And what Jesus was saying to the people, the crowds of people, when he spoke in parables, quoting the prophet of Isaiah, were hardened to God in their hearts. It was just a certain number of people that were going to have openness to him and the scripture does say that the way to to life is narrow and the path is is narrow and, and few there are that find it and, and wide is the path leading to destru destruction and many there are that follow it no and wide is the gate too, the entryway to it now like the people in isaiah's day you know people in their sin-laden consciences can be so hard that they in essence come to a point of no return and the parables serve two purposes, right? Um, for those whose hearts are hardened and given over to evil, they hear the truth simply and plainly for the last time. And they were going to reject it. And the Lord would only speak in parables, which would only result in them being further hardened and blinded to it, to the truth. Now, we believe that there are those today who fall into this class of people, right? They've heard the gospel of grace over and over again, and each time they hear it, they spurn God's love and His grace. They become so hardened to the good news of Christ that God has given them over to spiritual blindedness, where they will never have the opportunity to repent and be forgiven because their hearts are so calloused. This is why in a nation that first comes to hear the gospel, 
there can be so many people coming to Christ and why after many, many, many years uh, it can become very hardened ground much like we're seeing develop in our society as well today. Now, for those of us who are called and whose hearts are soft before God, the parables are great teaching opportunities to teach us truths of God's word, to mine the scriptures and to understand. And the Holy Spirit gives us clarity as to what is saying. But when we look at a solemn example of God's judicial blindness, you might say, his blind, the blindness that he allows people to, to enter, in 2 Thessalonians 2, the second half of verse 10 to 12, he, he, Paul says this, They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Eventually, people who persist in doing wickedness will be hardened by it and they won't see the truth no matter what you do, no matter what happens, no matter what miracle is performed. All of the way through history, there have been those who have delighted themselves in wickedness, and the rebellion continues today in our society. And for these people, the parables of Jesus will not make sense. They will turn away from God. They will consider his words to be undecipherable and foolishness. And God will give them over to what they want and turn them over to a depraved mind because they've embraced the lies that they love. But for those of us who are being called by Jesus and have received them, the parables he tells will be this rich source of encouragement because they are the wisdom of God that he has given to help his people, his people, his own children in time of need. As it is written in John chapter 1, 10, he was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or human will, but born of God. See, the Jews of Jesus' day had the opportunity to embrace him as the Messiah, and only a certain number of them did. And today the same thing is true. We can preach the gospel it's out on the airwaves, it's everywhere. People are talking to people and only a certain number of people are going to yield and bow the knee of their hearts to the Lord. So my friends, in the coming weeks, should the Lord tarry and uh, it be his will here, we're going to be exploring all 24 of these recorded parables that Jesus spoke in our Foods for Thought. Now, I'm going to be taking the devotionals um, for three days a week only. I'll be doing them on Wednesday morning, um, Friday morning, and then again on a Monday morning. So um, if you tune in on those days, I'd love to have you join me in devotions. And I pray that these parables will be a source of strengthening and encouragement to you as we grow together in the faith that God has called us to. God bless you all. Have a wonderful morning. This is Food for Thought.